taxes! He's a 10. I choose this family. Hey guys, welcome to episode 30 of 9-1 Lone Star Roundup. I'm one of your hosts, Katie, and with me are my lovely co-hosts, Grace. Hey guys. And EJ. Hey everyone. And today we will be talking about 9-1 Lone Star season 2 episode 14 titled Dust to Dust, aka the season 2 finale. Mm. Uh, <laughs> I'm somewhere between cheering and going, huh? Yeah, same. And I'm sure we'll talk about that today. And yeah, so quite a bit of things happen. And then we also have a lot of other things we want to talk about. So let's just get to talking. This guy, like, flying his first solo flight. And then the dust storm hits. And then we go 18 hours before the dust storm. It's, like, pretty much the most major thing. Right. Yeah. They adopted um, the OG's theme with that. Which I actually like. Yeah, we get a yeah. teaser, then we get the background. Yeah, oh, and yeah. like the solar storm was like that. The arsonist was like that. Oh the yeah, that's right. Yeah. So literally everything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then we have after the before the eighteen hours, the first thing we see is Grace and Judd at Tommy's, and Judd is teaching the girls like how to like. I think it was like the nods to like lasso or something. Yeah, he's yes, teaching them how to make a lasso. <laughs> it was so cute. Why did I love? that so i loved much. it too yeah, that was awesome. like that was all i needed <laughs> like, and that is once again reaffirming he's gonna be the best dad oh my oh, god yes. yes yes i really liked well this is really sad but i also really liked it because um grace and tommy are talking and tommy mentions how it was two weeks at the funeral had been two weeks ago for charles mm-hmm. and when grace or when great when tommy was looking at judd like teaching the girls this mm-hmm. she was like i'm grateful there's still a good man in their lives looking out for them and i'm not I'm gonna like, lie that oh, works that made me cry because i was just like oh my god like yeah. my soul was crying <laughs> you same mm-hmm. i'm yeah. just like why you do this to me yeah this is the... and you know funerals generally I'm not sure if all the time, but generally take place a week after the death. Um, So this was very, still very, very recent. And we see this because even though the funeral was two weeks ago, Tommy starts crying. Mm Mm-hmm. I just kind of wanted to jump through the screen and hug her, if I'm being honest. Oh my like, god, same. Lord. And I yeah. loved, like, Judd coming over and asking her if everything's okay and stuff. And that yeah. bitch, like, well, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah, and it's cool that he, you know, recognized something was going on and didn't want to startle the girls. So he's like, I'm just going to go check on everything. And- yeah. I feel like he's like that a lot, which I yeah. like and stuff. Yeah. And-, and, you know, Tommy would have, she's exactly the kind of person to have been trying to remain strong for the girls. Right. So it's like, yeah, you know, vulnerability is good to show, especially in times like this. But yeah, sometimes you just don't need to alarm them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, especially right. at eight and stuff. And this is kind of the moment where Grace and Tommy and Judd got talking and Tommy mentions how Charles life insurance came in and that he had taken care of the girls and her pretty much and mm-hmm. that she was going to leave the 126 and stuff. At this point I had a moment of panic, I'll be honest. I'm just like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, seriously, yeah. we're going to have to go through another chapter. Yeah. And I'll be honest, this was one, it was a spoiler I saw that wasn't actually a spoiler I saw the whole thing about Lone Star spoiling their own damn thing going, Tommy, don't leave us! And I'm like, you want me to smack you? But then... Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. You know, yeah. but like at this point, I'm like, first of all, do we have to deal with a new captain coming? Oh, hell no. Or Michelle coming back. At this point, I just love Tommy so much better than I love Michelle. Yeah. Oh my god. Right. Literally. Yeah. yeah, I know. Like, I was excited for Tommy before she even came in, but then like in the first couple episodes, I was really happy about a couple of things the first half of the season so i wasn't sure i mean i always liked tommy i just wasn't sure but like you get to the end of the season and i'm like i love this woman right. and yes stuff. 
And yeah, like it's so sad because like in this moment I was like, oh god, she's not leaving us. But also I was like, okay, this is like she's definitely not leaving us. Like I don't think she's leaving us and stuff. Right. Yeah. But I liked like Grace being like, well, have you told TK and Nancy what you're thinking? She's like, oh yeah, they're coming over tomorrow, and I'll break it to them then. And I liked Grace being like, well, I feel for you, T. Good luck. And I was like, oh. Just being like, you know what, you save some of that look for yourself. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, so and we find I, out Grace is going back to work. And I mm-hmm. absolutely love that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, yay! We, yeah. We knew that'd be happening, but still, yay! I know, I was like, it's about damn time. Come on now. And Judd's going back to work, but... Doesn't know he doesn't where know he where he's going to work. Right, yeah. And then Tommy brings up Owen and was like, oh, how is he doing? Um, at like the deputy chief's office or whatever. Or the, you guys know what I mean. Um, yeah, so he's been, <laughs> what, working as like an assistant to the deputy chief or something? Yeah, basically. And like... So many deputies. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's why it's so confusing. And, like, Judd being like, oh, you know what, when he likes to jump in with both of his feet. <laughs> I'll be honest, this yeah, entire next scene, I was just giggling <laughs> because I'm like, what the hell? Yeah. So, yeah, like, Owen's having a briefing for these, like, deputy chiefs or whatever, and he's like, Limes, I've been thinking a lot about Limes, and (laughs) I'm like, Owen, I get the sour, it's like the sour, but I think it's the Limes from TK's place. (laughs) <laughs> uh huh. Yeah, I believe when we watched together. Oh, Grace that's what like, I. Oh, I never thought yeah. of anything else. I was just like, oh yeah, it's a throwback to uh twelve. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was like we were watching Grace. Is like, of course it's limes, and I'm like, basically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What and else like, would it ever be? I know. And when I watched it, and I heard limes. I was like, really, 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 yeah. really, really. Yeah. Um, I'm like, oh wait, what does limes have to do with the fire? I feel like. <laughs> That's literally everything. And, like, so, like, Owen's Are trying... Are making margaritas or something? <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, you just going to sit back and drink oh margaritas God. or yeah. watching everybody else do the work for you. Like, that's basically what headquarters does. <laughs> So. Yeah, yeah. Well, he was trying to make a budget and be like, "Well, if we did this, we could save this much money." And mm-hmm. like, I that. mean, he had very good points, and I'm like, mm-hmm. "Yes, environmentalists." Yeah, um, Rodan would be proud. Right. Rodan yeah. pitched yeah. that line. Yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, I, I was like, I, I, as soon as he started talking about, well, I did this budget, and he's given out this big like binder full of information. I was like, why do I feel like this is gonna play into something later? Mm-hmm. I, was, I was like, I'm yeah. like, I don't know. I, as much as I love this scene, like laughing wise, at the same time, I was like, <laughs> well, yeah. Like that's great, but like the entire scene, I just kind of felt like the sense of like impending something. Not exactly impending yeah. doom, but just like <clears throat> something's coming. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, I was just gonna say that. Um, that I liked the part where like Owen's anxious about the one twenty six getting fixed, and the deputy <laughs> she's like, "Well, you just have to be patient." Owen's like, "I have." He's like, "For two weeks," and which we- is thirteen <laughs> days longer than should have taken. Yes, oh my I was like, "Owen, even you rebuilding the one twenty six didn't happen in a exactly. day." Exactly. It's yeah, yeah. Uh, Baby, what do you think is going to happen? Yeah, right. it was. It's literally him, his recovery time all over again. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Oh my yeah. god. He couldn't even get through a day. I'm like, really? <laughs> Come on, dude. <laughs> I mean, it does totally surprise me at all. Like, it's just like, no, okay. It and... Yeah, it's just kind of like, this is Owen. Yeah. yeah. And in a way, I sympathize, but like, still, two weeks. I right. think you can then, wait. And then, like, I feel like the whole reason why Deputy Chief Radford wanted Owen to come help, help him out was he had ulterior motives which we then find out is he wants Owen to take over the deputy chief position oh, when he yeah. retires in a few weeks and I'm which like, I'll be honest I was surprised at I was because too. I'm like hey, yeah boy he's only been down there for like a year yeah. um he has a great reputation great record and everything but I'll be honest that just seemed a little out of the blue yeah I kind of wish they saved the storyline for like a later season like maybe like season five because I I 
felt like it, introducing this now was like, oh, well, we know Owen's not going to take the job first right. of all. When, when he offered them a job, I was like, there's no way he's taking that. Like, come on, that's not going to happen. I see him being good at it, but at the same time, I think he'd go out of his mind. Yeah, right. exactly. Like we, he's losing his mind after two weeks of not having his firehouse. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I couldn't <gasps> imagine him like holding a dust job because, like, no, like we don't. Yeah, yeah, that that's not. <laughs> it wasn't feasible, but I still like hold that he would be a good deputy chief. They just need to make a new firehouse for the deputy <laughs> chief because. <laughs> Right. Well, a lot of times they don't have a specific, like, because I know here in my city, the main fire department also has the heads of, like, the fire department in it, as well as a regular fire station. So it's definitely possible for him to work out of a fire station. I've seen that before, and it's represented in other shows, like... Um, the brief little bit I watch of Chicago Fire, um, yeah. the chief's working out that. Yeah, and yeah. so, um, like, it's not unusual, and I could see that, but I still can't see him being happy in it. Yeah, no, he, he would, he needs the action, he wouldn't be happy with a desk job. Mm-hmm. I don't think, it, I don't think, also, he could trust anybody other than, other than Judd, and that's who I could see taking over, other than Judd to, like, watch out for his team. Yeah. And even if he trusted Judd, he still, I think... I think he kind of has in mind, like, the most capable hands are his own. Yeah. And he so... He's, like, asking for help. Yeah. <laughs> no, we've seen that. No, oh, yeah, we've seen that a bunch. <laughs> so, you know, this was an interesting... I see why they brought that in this season, but it's mm-hmm. like, okay, I see you. <laughs> yeah. Um, then Paul gets welcome to the <gasps> 122, and I was mm. like, I this I love this part um for like paul and i was like so like he's showing it the firefighter is showing him <laughs> him around and he's like yeah we have barbecues we grow on vegetables in a full garden and we have a lenin library a pickleball court and paul's like about so excited about the library he's like i'm a big reader and i'm like literally in so many scenes <laughs> you see him up a yes, damn book so like book. it's so yeah. oh my gosh i can so see him as a reader at this point i think he was like oh i could stay here permanently yeah this what did, what did he say something like the the country club of fire departments or yes something? Yeah. <laughs> yeah and i mean they ain't wrong but and, i guess if they don't have as many eventful calls right. yeah <laughs> the firefighter house. had pointed out and then, then i guess they have plenty of time to right. go and then he's, he's like oh you, you might want to go say you know say hello to some other people and he goes and sees jed and marjan i was like Aye! yes i was like the band is back together yeah, yeah, kind of. Part well, of. well, kind yeah. of. Um, wow. Well, yes. I, but basically, how Paul said it, it was like, I can't believe we all ended up here together. Marshall's like, look at that, John. He's like, and Paul's like, where's Proby? Yeah. <laughs> and that's the question where's Proby? Oh, Proby. It got stuck at the 129, which might I mention is the house that couldn't make it in time to TK and Carlos's. Yeah. I didn't connect that, but. Yep. Okay, yeah. bitches. <laughs> Uh, yep. Um, Um. (laughs) I mean, yeah. So Mateo is scrubbing floors because let's just spoil alert. Well, who cares? Um, the (laughs) captain is a big ass hat, and I do not like the captain keeps calling Mateo grunt, and he's like, grunt, put your back into it, or you'll you're never gonna get the stain out. And Mateo's like, you know what, captain. If it's all the same to you, I would prefer Chavez or Proby. Even Mateo's cool. And I'm like, Mateo, that's never going to happen. No, it's not. <laughs> that is. No, from the very beginning, he reminded me of, like, um, those stereotypical, like, mo- old yep. movie um, yep. military sergeants. Mm-hmm. Um, but also, most, like, most of all, he reminded me of just a big-ass racist. Yeah. I yes. said it. Um... <laughs> He reminded me of the captain, the old captain of the 118 that was in Chimney and Hen Begins, mm, who was yeah, a major right. racist. I don't know if this captain was racist, but he definitely was super old fashioned and rude. And I did not well, like I it. got such yeah. racist vibes off of him. Maybe he wasn't, but that's the vibe I got. I mean, I got, yes. Like, I, got, I don't think he would have been doing the same thing to, like, the white person standing nearby. Uh-huh. Well, I got, I got the racist vibe, but I also did get a little bit of a more traditional old firefighter because a lot of times the probies were nothing more than a grunt 
Like that's true. So like you, you know, because you, you hear a lot about it, especially the like the quote unquote old timers talk about you know back when they were a proby and all they did was like clean the toilets and you know scrub the floors. Um, so that's I got a little bit of that vibe from the guy too, but I definitely did not like him at all. I oh, no. hated him. Oh my like, gosh, Mateo yes. is so much better than him. Oh, oh my god, hell yeah. hell yeah! Like literally, yeah, yeah. And then we get to Tommy's where she invites Nancy. Nancy TK in and oh oh my god I love this part I love this also can we just say TK and Nancy were looking fine oh my oh, god yeah. yes did you guys you guys did see the meme about TK yes compared of course to, like, I Baby did Yoda. <laughs> oh my god. yeah I love that yes. <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> yes love that um yeah i really liked this and stuff and like i don't know i just really liked oh, tk had a lot of good like lines in the scene i think like him being like hey cap so any update and when we're gonna get it back out in the street um and she's like oh still waiting for a house with an ambulance bay to open up and tk's just like copy that just feels a little weird collecting a paycheck while the rig is collecting dust in the same in some city garage <laughs> And I'm just like, honestly, so many people in scenario would just be like, yes, give me all this time. Like, let me right, just right. collect a paycheck while not doing anything. Well, yeah, and his I house did that. just burn down not long ago, so he yeah. deserves a little bit of time off. Honestly, yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And Nancy's just like, I'm a piece of it, and I'm like, ooh, me and you both. I would be Honestly, like... Honestly, mood girl, though. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'd be TK and Nancy in this. Like, what do we need? Going to get out? I need to get out. I need to... And then also... All right, let's just flip on Netflix and like, oh, right, right. okay. Yeah, and Tommy gives them like the whole speech of how like they were the greatest blessing of her professional career. And TK. like, yeah, TK picks up real quick. He's like, mm-hmm. You're not coming back, are you? And she's like, I can't. The girls need me for this next chapter now more than ever. And I'm just like, <sighs> honestly yes though like this entire time i as much as i didn't want her to leave i was like i was behind her on this because i'm like yeah it makes sense she has twin eight-year-olds who just lost their dad right Mm -hmm. how in the world and for how many the the entire their entire lives their mom was there and then their dad all of a sudden takes over when mom goes back to work and then dad passes away yeah that's a huge like upshift in just that short amount of time Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I can I can understand it and definitely supported this Tommy's decision, you know. But um, they need a Carla. Yeah, <laughs> this just occurred to me. I'm like Carla. Yeah, yeah. I yeah they really do, really Carla. Um, but I appreciate that. You know, even Nancy kind of told her because she's lost Michelle, so she's gone through experience of losing a captain. And I like but, how she put it though. You're not the first yeah. captain I've had to leave to take care of family. Oh yeah, and yeah. her line after that was really good. Mm-hmm. I really liked it. It was like, and I have not nothing but love and respect for michelle and this is no different except that it is different you're my mentor of how i want to be as paramedic as a captain and hopefully one day well far away a mom and i'm just like and then she starts crying she's like i'm sorry this is super awkward and i'm like why is that me (laughs) yes i'm like don't destroy a perfectly good emotional moment i say fuck we're literally (laughs) that was was kind of me though um but also i feel so self-conscious about to me that i try not to cry so right and then then tommy's like as if i needed another reason to cry yeah (laughs) which which makes you know makes sense because like here she's like trying to be like you know but then like of course your crew is not wanting you to leave and so they've got their emotions with it yeah and i love how you can see how much the squad is bonded right mm-hmm. just like especially yeah. with the recent ad- addition of uh tk yeah i'm just and like lo- and losing tim and losing tim yeah i think it um, helps that tk already worked in the firehouse oh totally. oh yeah yeah just like- wasn't on the ambulance Oh yeah, because we had that a hole from the Ugh. minefield episode. Yeah. Oh yeah, I was um, just watching that too. Oh my <laughs> I was gosh. like, you are annoying, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, I loved seeing that because you know we still we still see more of the fire, um, like the firefighters than the paramedics, which I'm, that's fine. Yeah. But also, but, yeah, we see less of how the squad's bonded. Right. And I'm I'm really like, you know, I think we'll talk about this later. But, you know, just this scene right here was a big one for Nancy. And, you know, just one of many reasons why Brianna deserved to get 
you know, be picked up for a season series regular for season three. Honestly, I didn't know she wasn't a series regular. When I heard that she was, I'm like, she wasn't? Yeah, she never She turns up all the time. Mm -mm. Yeah, well, because, I don't know, because season one, they didn't really make the paramedic storyline a real, like, like, the main focus of the show. I think this season they have, to an extent, like, and stuff, so I feel like that's probably why but honestly yeah. with the addition of tk and tommy like it really took forefront mm-hmm. yeah yeah um, that's what i mean and you know tim obviously didn't stick around for mark elias to be promoted to series regular right. but i'm glad Bianca baker was because mm-hmm. you know about being fun yeah literally yeah well and, yeah. I, and i think too you know we like you said the first season we didn't have as much of the paramedic crew um because we were really focused on michelle's storyline with her family more so than she was her career yes. um so we i imagine that they were guest stars you know quote-unquote guest stars for season one and then season two as well um it, you know and and that's probably why know, or maybe, reoccurring guest characters yeah yeah so like mark probably like picked up another job because he didn't know if his job was going to be secure like every season yeah you know? and so maybe he got another job and that um it may have been conflict. off the bat just more stable mm-hmm. so you know i am so it's cool that you know now brianna has been picked up as a you know regular for season three so she's got a for sure job next season yeah. and you know we've got tommy definitely main cast tk way past main cast <laughs> um so you know yeah. our paramedic team's secure yep. yes i yes. say that and we'll like have another volcano next season but you know we'll uh, about that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, and so next i think this is funny but owen and billy meet for lunch and this is kind of the part where i joked <laughs> that they were going on their first date yeah, yeah. Bowen! <laughs> Bowen. Bowen. <laughs> I still ship it, even with the atrocity that happened later, later. in the episode. Yeah, we'll um, get there. Also, I just can we just say that the word atrocity is really fun? Um, <laughs> but yeah, I still is. ship it. We ignore what happened at the end of this episode. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah. Owen orders a kale antioxidant salad. I'm just like gross yes i was I am yeah. Billy say that. who orders a bacon blue burger with extra rings i yeah same here i'm yeah. really kale is just gross like yeah. i don't i don't mind salads i actually like salads but kale ugh, yeah no. I, I like, like kale, kale well enough kale but it also gross. depends on the the like kind of kale yeah, because I, some are sweeter some are like bleh. i <laughs> just I, don't like anything that feels like super like spiky feeling like it's texture for me nope yeah yeah. Yeah. and i love owen's response he's you know because billy's like like you're staring into the face of god and (laughs) gets to the way he's looking at it and owen's like you eat that whole thing you're gonna see god (laughs) i'm dying like i I miss that that part and billy's like well at least if this putting me in the ground not the cancer he's like what do you mean not the cancer well has follow-up Doc said radiation took out two of my tumors. Last one's on the run. I'm like, yay, yay, yay. yay. Yeah, so it's good news for Billy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Owen mentions that he was just offered the deputy chief position. And and I'm like, I saw the interest Billy was like. Mm-hmm. And I, I the interesting just... thing was, I was like, I'm not sure if Billy took like a real interest later or if he was just putting it on because he was like, yeah, you and me were like made for um being out there, so to speak. Right. Which I... I can't see Billy being happy behind a desk job either. No, Mm-mm. I can't either. I there's I, there's so much of what happened in the end that doesn't fit to me. Right, but we but can I, get to that later. And I yeah, I think in this scene, at least for me, I when I saw Billy peak his interest and he said that about like neither one of us are really meant to be behind a desk. I was thinking like, no, you're saying that because you're jealous of the fact that the deputy chief offered it to uh, Owen, New York. who's a new, new timer in yeah. the area, and Billy's been in the fire department for years. So he's like... So but I honestly, just imagine... I get that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. A little bit, but still like, Billy... <laughs> Yeah. Don't yeah. make me strike my good opinion of you now. Right. My newly well, formed good opinion. Um, yeah, literally. Yeah. Don't make me want to send but... have you get hit by lightning again. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That was perfect. Literally. <laughs> okay, so then we move on from that. 
just let's just say Billy's an icon with the burger. Um, yeah. <laughs> and we go to Grace back at Dispatch, and she gets this. Actually, reminded me very much of the Welcome Sue and OG got back. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, which I just realized we had two main characters in Dispatch get injured and head out around the same time. Oh my um, god! Yeah. So Grace is back, and everyone is you know holding a party. I wish I got just for existing. <laughs> um, if I, I'm just gonna say. Um, <laughs> but like there's it's great to see how loved she is yeah mm-hmm. i'm just like it's, who couldn't love grace right. and of I course know. she's very humble and she's like oh don't you know she's she's trying not to get the attention and but i'm like <laughs> you deserve it grace you seriously yeah. deserve it yeah yeah it's like the fact of being center of attention like it's just yeah. like eh, no thank you i do not want this commotion around me right. <laughs> oh i know I, whenever i've been put like directly in the center of attention i'm just like you know people say this is great i'm not feeling it yeah exactly <laughs> and like i like what she Introvert. says yeah same um and I like what she says, where she's like, call me crazy, but there's no other, no other place on earth where I feel more relaxed than this place. I was, <laughs> I was, I found that really funny. Yeah, like, same. Oh, that's not what you'd think was the time, but like in a crazy way, I get it. So. Yeah, yeah. It's like a first responder thing, I feel like. Yeah. It's like, they could be going to this most chaotic thing and normal people would let, be like, uh, What? But they're like, oh, no, bring on the crazy. (laughs) And so we switch from that. That was a short, sweet scene. And we head to Mateo, who's picking up lunch. And can I just say they should have sent probably about three firefighters, (laughs) not one, to go pick up all that stuff. Oh, yeah. They were just being assholes. That was ridiculous amount of stuff. I feel like they didn't even need that much food. They just made the probie get all that just so he could, like, drop it or something. Yeah. yeah, I think so. And also, me just seeing there like, well, you ain't gonna stay in shape with that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you can't do your job if you're like, right, right, literally. But that was also just me being nasty, not any like. Oh yeah, <laughs> that was just me being nasty towards them, <laughs> not anything else. Oh yeah, yeah, um, literally. Yeah. And like, he's completely oblivious to like what's going on around him as he's trying to like carry stuff. I just, yeah, boy. And I and I felt bad. <laughs> Because he's like, How? the box is so big, you can't see around it. And he keeps <laughs> dropping stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, me? Yeah. Same. That's like me when I have to carry things and the, I can't see. Or like when I have to push things. This actually happened to me the other day. I was pushing something and I ran into something because I could not see. I don't have good depth perception. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and so we have the back at the 122, yeah. um, where Paul, Marja, and Jenner playing pickleball. Which mm. I haven't played since I was in, like, high school. I actually oh have God. never played it. I haven't either. Yeah, yeah, it's like this little wooden mallet and, a, like, a big wiffle ball. It's a very interesting game. Yeah, yeah. It's like yeah. a cross between tennis and badminton and volleyball. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. And so after that, um uh well during that, you know, the storm hits yeah. and Marjan's yelling for everyone to come inside. Yeah, um, they have because, to close all the doors. Yeah. Because they're seriously the sand is coming in there so fast. Yeah. Um and you know, this is probably something Judd may have seen this before. Yeah, but no one else there is likely to have. Yeah, I would have thought that Judd would have saw this before, but he also made a comment later where he seemed kind of confused. And -hmm. also, Paul was like, "What is this? What is that? A tornado?" And Judd's like, "That ain't like any tornado I've ever seen." So I kind of had the feeling that maybe he hadn't, maybe experienced that. Maybe it's just not common enough. Yeah, Yeah. it could also just be something that, like, I mean, I did look to see videos of this, these kind of things, and it has happened, obviously. But like, I don't know, it could have just not happened in Austria or whatever. Right. And then uh, we kind of jump from there to Mateo, and he's like, drops stuff, and he's like, "Oh, a little sand never hurt nobody." And I'm like, "Yes, the way they treated." Dude, they deserve a little bit of sand <laughs> yeah. in their food. Honestly, Pretend just salt. pile it on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Tell them it's a new condiment. Um, yeah. But, and it's but, like Mateo's like so oblivious still, and it's like, 
dude, look, look around. Just look up. Everybody's I'm running. like, move, move, move. Like, I'm like, honey. I think, yeah. Like, I think he's just trying to observe it, but then, like, and he eventually does act on it, but it's just like, this stuff is crazy. You might want to move a little bit and not just stand there. Right. Uh-huh. And then we are back to the 122 and the firefighters like so much for no crazy calls around here and paul's like yeah we got the 126 in the house (laughs) we bring the crazy (laughs) like girl yes girl yes we love that and like then marjan mentions how this sort of thing happens in lebanon and i'm like lone star was it was this like a hint of a backstory i was just like i'd always thought she was born in the u.s but maybe Same. she wasn't yeah i know or like, maybe I- she's heard a lot about it from parents who are lebanon because natasha karam is lebanese mm-hmm. right exactly and so i'm like yes thank you for like staying true to that but also ooh, yeah well, like, be, her parents could be from there and then yeah. she might have been born in the u.s yeah, yeah, that's what I, that's the second thing I was saying. And I um, yeah, and I also like how she like explained it. She's like dry patch of soil and boom, you've got yourself a haboob. And Judd's like, say what? And Marjo's <laughs> like, haboob, a massive dust storm. That's what it's called. And Paul's like, that's just not right. And Judd's <laughs> like, I know, mother ain't nature ain't no joke and paul's like no i mean that she just said the, oh, the word haboob and probie wasn't here to enjoy it honestly the trio Mood. quad so to speak is not complete with oh my god quartet. Yeah. Quartet, oh, yeah yeah although i do like this, seeing this trio because we don't really get this yeah. a lot no, we don't and I so love i it. kind of yeah i wanted mateo to be there and stuff but like i also like kind of loved this little moment like it was yeah. just uh yeah and i i know we basically hopped over the little bit of owen and billy that popped up when the storm came um i I think it was after this no um, i thought it was well it's not wherever it is in the um wherever it is in the notes um it still eventually oh you're at some point yeah you're right because owen it covered in dust goes back to the chief's headquarters exactly all um, right yeah it, it blew over in the restaurant area that they were in and i was right. just, i was saying that i'm watching the winds like the tables are flying mm-hmm. um people are getting knocked over and these are only like what 62 mile hour winds or something like yeah. stuff gets up in the hundreds right and so i'm watching this and owen runs out and saves a child who got trapped or wait was it the mother or the child that got trapped i don't remember i think um, they saved the mother and she was freaking out because she couldn't find her daughter and then owen went back out there to find her yes and then owen goes back on billy's like where the hell are you going he's like there's still people out there <laughs> yeah just typical like, that is owen. right but also and- honey your lungs yeah <laughs> um, honey, your lungs. i know he's like lung cancer hello <laughs> it doesn't just go I think- away I think at this point they've gone far, far enough into the season where they're like, oh, lung cancer, who? Like, honestly, I don't think that's, like, first of all, he just had his surgery. Maybe, like, I think this is, like, well, that was only, like, probably, like, four weeks ago at this point. Yeah. Oh, gosh. That's Three, four true. weeks ago. So, like... I'm like, oh, and you, you probably still should be, like, you know, Yeah, because, like, um... Three weeks ago, when the um when the house got blown, and <laughs> so to speak, or two weeks, whenever it was, anyway, um Judd was still acting captain. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's all happened so close together. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Anyway, so yeah, all so because we're... I just I, literally I just sat there with on your lungs. <laughs> yeah, so out in this like little restaurant eatery corner part thing is where Owen, Bully, and another Mateo is also there, but. I don't think Owen doesn't run into... Wait, same place? I thought they were in different well, places. Kind of, it was kind of the same place because Owen ended up coming up on uh, Mateo eventually. It, yeah, it looked, no, I honestly don't think it was at the same place though really? because... Yeah, because, um, I don't know. I don't know. In my mind, it was in the same place because I felt like where they were eating was maybe closer to where the headquarters might have been. Oh, that could have been. Because yeah. Owen had to drive out and find where the restaurant was. Mm, yeah. That's right. I think if they'd been in the same place because Owen went to 
headquarters first. Yeah. And he's and all, then. like, going in there covered in dust, and everyone's kind of looking at him like he's crazy. Honey, have you looked outside the window yet? Yeah. Like, yeah. And then, like, Deputy Chief didn't want him to go back out, and he goes, uh, and he, but he finds out the 129 is missing an engine. They can't get a hold of him. And he's like, I'm going back out there. My probie yeah. is out there, and he's working with the 129 today. So I loved that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, can we just look at the fact that Radford apparently forgot me too? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, um, he gosh. was your driver and the pilot. Like, yeah, exactly. Don't be yeah. like Mateo who. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. I was just like, don't be like that. Um... And then the next part, what I'm like, like, yes, that? boy. Yes. Go, Mateo. He Mateo starts triaging. triaging. Like, yes. People underestimate him sometimes. And I'm like, mm-hmm. he's got skills. Yeah. He's got skills. I think it's just that everyone else is so more, much more experienced and older that, like, they get, like, you see them, t- like, showing their skills and Mateo's fitting in with them. Mm-hmm. But in this, we get to see him shine. I love how he got, like, you know, represented yeah. in this episode. Like, yes. Yeah. Um, yes. Which Always. I know we didn't really mention it, but, you know, when the, the plane came down a couple scenes before this. Yes. A commercial flight and a private flight. Yeah. Because uh, I believe the either they the both got caught in the storm or they collided and got caught in the storm. Not I sure. I think they collided. Yeah. Either way, the commercial flight. Hope yes. there wasn't anybody on there. <laughs> um, right. Kind of hard to tell. Yeah, um, but the, the the pilot from earlier, the very beginning of the episode, was rescued alive by Mateo. Right, and like the boys working in there with no equipment, <laughs> and it's like sweetheart, and he's triaging them into red and green and yellow spots, and yeah, he he was going like he was doing I was really like, well. Respect. Yeah. Yeah. And so. We head to the next scene um, where Tommy, Nancy, TK, and the girls are watching the storm on the news. And I'm just like, this must be hell for them to be watching this and not be able to do anything. Right. <laughs> um, and yeah. Nancy's just like, you think we can get the rig out of the garage? <laughs> and TK's like, yeah, I know where they keep the keys. Gee, I wonder where he got that idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Imagine TK texting Buck being like, so you never believed that I stole ambulance today. And he's just like, so you moved down to ambulances. But like this to me didn't really seem like stealing. No, no I think... um. I think for like that, it was their own damn rig. Yeah, they just right. weren't able to use it because they didn't have an ambulance area out. So yeah. I don't think it was stealing necessarily. Yeah. It was just <laughs> they weren't supposed to be working. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, but like, yeah. Either literally. way, it was very much a flashback to yeah crossover. Well, even if it wasn't directly the same <laughs> thing, it just makes you think of it. It's diehard. Right. It, diehard fans are gonna know. Oh yeah. yeah. So I, even if they. <laughs> didn't intend it like guys nothing gets past us yeah, literally exactly. <laughs> especially us us, right. us, us. <laughs> yeah mm. and like i liked um like cool because like it kind of seemed like at the start that tk and nancy would just go out mm-hmm. and then like the girls are like mommy you need to go and she's like no babies mommy it doesn't work today and they're like but you heard him those people need help they need you and i'm like oh, oh yeah. and uh yeah because that's what they're talking about first responders were like overwhelmed um on the tv with you know, talking about what was going on mm-hmm. yeah and you know the girls they i think that was helpful for the decision tommy later makes yeah because they get it they get her job they get <laughs> right. you know mommy has to go help people and <laughs> that was just precious and it yeah, gets pre- it more precious later yeah we will talk about that later yeah um (laughs) yeah so owen yeah owen's driving legit in the snow in the dust storm and he calls the 129 to find out where the rig is and to find out mainly where mateo is right and they're like oh he picked up lunch and owen's just like oh so you haven't heard back from him and they're like oh the guy's like, oh no. Um, we didn't even really think about calling him. Yeah. 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 I'm just like, um, back up. Take a breath. Um, you don't even think to check in yeah. on your 
Even on your lunch? Yeah. Because apparently you care about that more than you care about Mateo. Yeah. <laughs> just saying. Um, you can't even... I'm just like, nobody is caring. I kind of just wanted to slap somebody up the side of the head. I don't yes. know. Yeah. Just, yes. Hand me the captain. Hand me the guy on the phone. I don't know. I'm just going to yeah. slap somebody. <laughs> so the, yeah, so the guy tells Owen where they sent him for lunch. That's so something Owen at heads least. that way. Yeah, yeah. And so we had to dispatch where Grace has gotten a call from a woman who is buried alive and i'm just like oh this is new um, yeah not new new necessarily but intriguing um and she took sh- she took cover in a storage container when the storm hit but the dust piled on top of her yeah that's and so i'm heavy. just like yikes yeah so she said this was a wooden container mm. oh my it's god yeah. like which helped her escape yeah but <laughs> Which I love how Grace is like, she's like, well, what kind of box is it? She's like, what does it matter? And she's like, well, you, you know, the type of box. And she's like, it's a pine box. Oh, that's just like a coffin. I'm like, oh, oh. That. Uh, that, that is not like, helping anybody. That gave me nightmares I didn't know right. I had because I was like, exactly. Jesus. Like, I do not want to be trapped in a coffin. Right. And Honestly, then- this made me realize my fear of being buried alive that I never do. I yeah. Have. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Same. <laughs> so, um, y'all, uh, make sure that when I die, <laughs> we know I'm dead. Yeah. <laughs> Just <laughs> Right. And then Grace is all like, believe it or not, we have protocols for <laughs> getting out of a coffin or pine box. <laughs> I'm like, just like, oh my god, why? I mean, I want to know the story behind this. <laughs> I mean, you got to prepare for any situation. That is true. <laughs> this call was crazy, though. Was. Like, I was like, damn, like, this is just like, it was ty- kind of terrifying, but also, like, kind of like, I don't know, crazy. So, it was just crazy. Yeah, like, it was just crazy. And so, like, you know, she breaks... But, like, weirdly plausible. Yeah. So, that, oh, that, I yeah. think that's what makes it more terrifying, because it's like, that could happen. well, that could happen! <laughs> Not for good reasons, let's just say that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, so she breaks her way out of the box, and, yeah. like, you just see dirt go down, and then, like, she had to put, like, a sweater over her face to protect her airway mm-hmm. and stuff, and it was just, like, it was wild. Yeah. And, and like, you know, she'd been worried about her husband right? mm-hmm. because she'd been calling him and he wasn't picking up. <laughs> so, you know, there's that, oh, what has happened? Right. And she gets up out of the thing and she's like, I'm free. And her husband comes through and goes, what are you doing? <laughs> what do you think she's doing? Yeah. What does it I'm look like-, like she's doing? <laughs> Gardening? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, like, do you not see what just happened? Like, there was a friggin' dust storm. Like, what do you think she was doing? She obviously needed to take shelter. Yeah, like, did you just miss everything that happened? <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> so, you know, yay, Grace. <laughs> um, also, if there are really protocols for that, then I want to know the story. Yeah, really. Because, you know, laws get put into place for a reason, and protocols do too. Yeah. <laughs> So we head back to Tommy's. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, you know, they're getting ready to go. And Tommy's like, all right, girls, you mind your babysitter, you promise? And the girl's like, we, we promise. promise. It's Carlos. Uh, and it was so um, cute. Yeah, I was like, he, he knocked the Jenga tower over and he's like, Ugh. <laughs> And the girls were all excited that they beat him. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's so I, cute. Yeah. I love this. And can we just say best part of it all? Nancy goes adorable, and she's like, "Right, <laughs> TK, you can see the wheels turning in his head." Yeah, and can He's I? Like, and I want like, his kids. Yeah. I would like to revert to Rafa's tweet. Oh my god, <laughs> and I got yes. And um, he, he literally just said over it, <laughs> and we were on we were on call. We were talking when this happened, oh, and I just said, like, "Guys, why did Rafa tweet over?" Yeah, that's just, we're like, "What?" <laughs> and I'm like, "Why would he tweet that?" And then we like find it's a like, gif of this scene, and like honestly, relatable. My ovaries that I actually have. <laughs> <laughs> Tiki doesn't have them and he was going after me. Oh my sure. god. Yes. Like, no. this is so perfect. This is yeah. like a perfect way for them to bring up kids without bringing up kids. Mm-hmm. And, like, mm-hmm. like, again, great guy. 
Yeah. <laughs> um, great guys with kids. And I'm like, yes, please. Mm-hmm. But that was the most adorable thing that I never knew I wanted was him babysitting Tommy's kids. Yes. I didn't know I needed this, but now I'm glad that I've seen it because I do need this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I love what it goes along with later in the episode, too. Like, it's yeah. so cute. <laughs> I love Carlos's line after that, where he's like, don't worry, don't worry about us. Go save the world. And I was like, <laughs> oh, love that. Love and that. And it just occurred to me. Um, but that is absolutely inappropriate, so I don't know if I should do that. <laughs> um, uh, no, I was just thinking, like, well, you know, the booties look really good in the uniform. <laughs> So I wonder if Carlos was, like, uh, checking to Dad as he left the door. Oh, oh yes. I'm sure he yeah. did. <laughs> like, relatable. Oh. He's probably remembering the last time he took it off TK, too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we know what's happened. We just haven't seen it yet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But oh, that has please. been a request of Rafa from what I hear. Yeah. Oh my god, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, Anyways, um, so, so back at the storm. <laughs> yeah, back at the storm, Mateo goes up to the building that had the airplane going into it, and he goes up to the elevator because people were stuck in it, and I was like, <laughs> I've been in that situation. I mean, I mean, not like this exact situation, but I've been stuck in an elevator before. Not um, a fun time. Um, no. Yeah, and Mateo's like, awesome fire. The people are like, good, the fire department's here, and Mateo gets the door open yeah. and then the other door open and like the people they had mentioned they were what because of com- chemicals and they're like uh jet fuel immediately i was like that's what fuel. i thought and then i because because i was cringing when he grabbed that big light to like pry it open the, the like the metal and the mm-hmm. electric i didn't actually like... know it was a concern necessarily i didn't either but the moment that you like they said jet fuel i'm like okay one lit thing right they all gonna die <laughs> right yeah. like yeah and i love just as he starts to pry it open again owen comes up and like <laughs> yeah. finds him i love oh, but yeah. but we missed a important little bit yes where um the guy was uh, one of the guys in the elevator goes i thought you said the fire department was here and i was like i am the fire department like, <laughs> oh god we're gonna die i <laughs> love that yeah. i'm like talk about like no faith Jeez. no faith but also relatable listen this is mateo you're fine i mean i don't know <laughs> he may have a few like marvel references here and there <laughs> or oh. He may still be a kid at heart, but he is a good firefighter. Yes, he is. And we I'm... see this when Owen comes up. Um, yeah. It's like, Cap, how did you find me? And Owen's like, I followed your trail. Mateo says, a patty melts. <laughs> <laughs> and I just see the giggling. And Owen's like, a rescues. And I'm like, yes! Love that. Like, yeah. it's like, yeah, Mateo, you saw your patty melts. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, I, and I love how... Um, I think Owen said something about, like, he stops him from using the bar, and he's like, no, we can't use that. He's like, they're covered in jet fuel. And I, for a moment there, I'm like, oh, I wonder if Owen had any familiarity with that from September 11th. I'm sure, oh, because maybe. that's what happened. So, yeah. like, I heard about stuff. that. Yeah. There was yeah, jet fuel ex- yeah, pouring pretty, down. Yeah, honestly, I'm pretty sure in this interview I read that Rob actually mentioned that for the 9-11 thing, so I'm sure that had to come and play with this. Yeah. yeah, but, um, and then the 122 arrives to the scene, and Paul is just like, well, one of the guys is like, oh, go start triage, and Paul looks around, and he's like, I think somebody already took care of triage, and the captain, I believe, was like, who, we're the first company on scene, and Marjan's just like, asking the people I was like who separated you in these groups and the guy's like that handsome firefighter <laughs> and Jen's like hey I'll be damned because he thinks it's Owen because yeah, that's who he sees yeah. mm-hmm. and Jen's just like hey you mean him don't you and the guy's like no <laughs> And he's like him, and then Mateo is running behind him. Hello, <laughs> Mo. And like, they are so it. impressed. Yeah, they are mm-hmm. so proud. And then Marshawn, honestly, Marshawn's mood. She's like, "What is happening?" Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. But then we have the one twenty six back together, almost completely. We're waiting for the ambulance. Um, <laughs> but still, um, it doesn't take long. That's all I say. Yeah. 
<laughs> they get everyone out of the elevator. It does almost fall. Does fall, but almost with Owen in it. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. They get him out, fortunately, but that reminds me of the many elevator rescues we've seen before. In I both I believe Nine One One original and other shows. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Literally, like, it's terrifying. Uh, I'm gonna take the stairs, thank you. Um. Literally, my mode. But still. Yeah, I would take the stairs even to like the sixth floor because I just didn't want to get trapped in an elevator again. Yeah. <laughs> and so one twenty nine shows up. Uh... And I'm just like, let me at him. Um. And the captain still being horrible and yelling at Mateo right in front of everybody. I just like public humiliation much. Yeah. Like, no, you don't do this to my boy. And I Um, love how Owen's like, not that you did any better today. Isn't that right, Cap? mm -hmm. It's like, what? Excuse me? And you are? Owen's like, special assistant to the deputy chief. And this man's actual captain? And the only reason I'm out here today is your rig didn't check in for hours. And he's like, that's different. We broke down in the dust storm, killed all our comms. And John, I love him. He's like, y'all thought it was smart to drive around through the dust storm? Yeah. And Marge is like, talk about break protocols. And, and, the guy, just like, and that captain's all trying to like, oh, well, it uh, snuck up on us. Uh, no, he wanted to be the first one on scene somewhere and thought he'd yeah. be, you know, Mr. Hot shit. Yeah, literally, you're not hot shit. You're, yeah, you're literally. An you yes, <laughs> literally. <clears throat> and I like Mateo calling him off and like, because the guy's He's like, this man, Teo, like, with all this back of it, starts laughing. He's And so the captain's like, well, why don't you start by raping down our rig? I want it to be dust three by the time we're done with this call. And it's Owen's- like, honey, you just drove through a dust storm. Yeah. Take it through Not the literally. damn car wash. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, exactly. I don't think you can ever actually do that, but still. Right. But I love Mateo being like, after Owen's like, is it really necessary, Captain? And Mateo's just like, it's cool. I got it. Captain T- Tatum, I'll wipe down your, your um cab. I'll pick up your fatty foods. I'll scrub your disgusting floors because that's who I am. And the f- other firefighter was like, at least he's a happy guy. <laughs> and then Mateo's like, no, I'm a firefighter. And I've already reread the FD manuals like five times. Listen to it actually because my friends recorded it for me. So I've learned how to respond to toxic spills and dumpster fires, all of which was great training for working for you guys. So I want to <laughs> Go, I yes. was I basically screaming here because yes. I'm like, hell yeah, boy. Mike, drop. Yes, and then Owen's like, like yeah, boom. and then the like Owen turns to like Judd Marjan and Paul, and they're like, kind of all cheering. <laughs> they're like, oh, oh, yeah. I'm so yeah. proud of him. And then of course, Captain has to take uh, Mateo's moment again because he collapses. Yeah. yeah. Ah, so in kind of timing, uh, been Cap- having issues with breathing. And he inhaled too much dust. Which, yeah. you know, I was, I knew this was going to happen because he's been clocking this entire time. And yeah, I was right. like, I don't know, no one else has seen this, but like, he's going to go down. And he yeah. went down. And yeah. this is like, stepped on Mateo's moment, please. Yes. <laughs> and this is like the perfect timing for Tommy, TK, and Nancy to come in. I'm like, yes, we have the 126. Yes. The trio, the other trio I love. Yeah. <laughs> the band's all back together. Literally. Um, yeah. And they say from you know, that's that. <sighs> anyway, um <laughs> so I did not like that caption. Mm. I don't either. Yeah. But you know, good they saved him. <laughs> yeah. Um and then we get into our last one twenty six hang of the season. Mm-hmm. And Buttercup so comes much. in from his doghouse. Yeah. <laughs> you can see the the dust piled up outside. I know. Buttercup. <laughs> oh, Buttercup baby, that's all I needed. Yeah. Oh. Yes. Hopefully he was safe and, like, sound inside. I imagine he I'm was. Sure they wouldn't was. leave him out. Oh, yeah, no. And, like, I loved Paul being, like, so proud of like Mateo and just like so hype about the whole situation and he's like Carlos you should have seen our boy putting that ass half capped and I'm blast in front of everyone yo hey man what did you say Mateo's just like so a white hot blur <laughs> and I was just like mm, you called him a toxic <laughs> dumpster, dumpster fire. fire I've never come across her if anyone in my life 
<laughs> um, and Mateo's like, for real? And Tika's like, yeah, babe, seriously. It was like the mother of all mic drops. Oh, okay. and like, he's slayed him. I mean, literally, dude dropped his breath on choking on Jordan's own bile. And Carlos is just looking like, please stop. Yeah, I yeah, don't know. know if he was disgusted or if he was just like, that happened. <laughs> <laughs> I think he was like, is no one else getting alarmed at this? Yeah, know, oh. right. They're all excited about his like demise. And Carlos is like, what's going on here? <laughs> I think maybe he feels a little scared of who he's in yeah. company with right now. <laughs> and, now- and it's just like, don't worry, he lived. <laughs> Carlos is like, wow, that all sounds pretty. Paul's like, epic? Mar- uh, Mateo? Um, it was wicked. Chris is gonna say, I was like, I'm gonna say insane. Mateo, aren't you worried about what the captain might do to you? I'm like, thank you, so much. actually has sense. <laughs> right, right. Leave it to Carlos to have the sense in the group. <laughs> Pretty of much. Course. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, Mateo is like, yeah, because at the end of the day, he's not my captain, and I'm definitely not his probie. <laughs> I like this boy. Chris is like, yeah, I could decide all this, but... Oh my god, yes. Like, <laughs> he's like, yeah, but he could put you through hell. And Mateo's like, eh, I'm more like purgatory. I'm he's actually- like, <laughs> oh yeah. I just gotta su- survive him and the rest of the 129 D-bags, which that line was literally occurring to me when he was calling off the captain. But I couldn't remember if it was from this show or another show, but now I know it was from probably this um yeah. and stuff <laughs> but yeah but my and favorite... like and then it's back to the promised land of the 126 yes. baby come on that was y'all my... can i get an amen amen, amen. <laughs> that was my favorite yeah, i'm like that. thank you i love that um i needed that <laughs> yeah oh. and then we get judd and owen at Jen and Grace's, of course, and he's like dusting off the picnic table. And might I add, in the last finale, this is where Jen and Grace were sitting. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, like I honestly didn't think of that until my friend pointed it out, and I was like, "Oh my god, you're right. This they were sitting there. Like, it's it official. Like, yeah, we change our podcast name to Around the Picnic Table. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, um, but anyway. yes, love that. But anyway, yeah, and like. So, like, Owen obviously turns down the job, which, not surprised there, because, like, just logistically, that would not have worked. Yeah, they kind of would have had to have written Owen out as the main character. Yeah. Because this is, Owen is, like, main character, and that just wouldn't have worked. So, I'm glad that he turned it down, even though I think he would have been amazing at it. Yeah, yeah. But it had everyone drinking disgusting smoothies, and... (laughs) Oh um, my god. Turned um, out their thermostat's one degree. Um. Yeah, and like, Judd says something all on the lines of, like, so how to go, um, Deputy R- Radford take you spurning him? And he's like, I didn't spurn him. <laughs> and Judd's just like, well, at least you dismissed his heartfelt offer out of hand what would you call that and he's like maybe i did spurn him yeah. and he took it with great grace i think he understands for a great cause yeah. it's like it's for the best cause 126 126 yeah, 126. yeah cheers to that i'm just like i love that yeah and then they get talking about like how long the house is gonna take to get back up and owen's like yeah they're dragging their feet and then they're like wait we dig through steel all the time <laughs> and then cue the last scene of the episode yeah i'm just like it took I you this long to figure it out <laughs> i know how many weeks has this been out i'm like they could have had it mostly done by now let's be honest yeah really yeah it's and only so. yeah two weeks yeah two, can two we weeks. just reflect on how this is like early last season we had Owen and TK uh, with a group of God knows who, um, fixing up the firehouse. Yeah. And now we have the big 126 plus like Grace, Carlos, uh, big extended coming in. I'm like, family. Yeah, the family. Yeah. And I love, yeah, like, I love, I think this might be my favorite part of the whole episode. Honestly, yeah. Yeah, like, the specific part. I like Owen being like, 
everything charred goes. I don't care if it's on the walls, the floor, if it's my espresso maker. I'm like, don't talk too soon. It goes. <laughs> and Dia's like, get your chisels, your scrapers, and your demo bars, and Mateo, here you go. Marshall's like, wait, whoa, 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 not fair. Why does he get the sledgehammer? I'm like, girl, I'm the same way. He's like, because I called her on the ride over, and today is my shoulder day. <laughs> yeah. And Paul's like, yeah, right, Roby. It has nothing to do with Thor. Also also Thor. Thor. <laughs> I'm, I've seen there as a Marvel fan crackling. Oh my god. But before they get to continue on with that much, it's Owen's like, also not Proby. Not anymore. When we open this firehouse, you're looking at firefighter Mateo Chavez. And oh. it's just like, screech! Yeah. yeah, we literally talked about this last week. We are like, that's definitely calming. And uh, honestly, yes, because we too. saw dress uniforms, we thought that it was going to be that, yeah. which, you know, obviously that wasn't it. Mm-hmm. But um, I'm just like, I'm elated that it still is happening. Um, and Tommy shows up with the girls. My favorite. Oh, Honestly, my, f- my favorite little scene of the episode. Yeah, and it's like, Cap, you brought the whole squad. And Tommy's like, the squad insisted. Oh. Yes. Yeah, just and like they, how my favorite goddaughter is doing, and they're like, "We're doing good." And then they run to Carlos, like, <laughs> Carlos! Carlos! And, and they literally like, they duck so under Judd's arm to run and go <laughs> get to Carlos. Oh. I'm like, and just like, well, okay, then. <laughs> I love I'm that. like I'm that was so cute. I love that. I love how they probably spent a few hours with Carlos, and they're already like that's basically like Uncle Carlos. Yeah. Oh mm-hmm. my god! Yes. Let's make that a thing. Let's make like TK and Carlos their babysitters. Yeah. Like I. <laughs> We already got Carlos as a babysitter. Let's make TK and Carlos the oh, babysitters. Yes. And then somebody I want to see them the watching uh, about... Judd and Grace's baby. Yeah, somebody will have to make the comment about, like, well, you guys need practice, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, or, yes, 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 yeah, yes. That has to happen. Yeah, I just love, like, the whole montage of them fixing everything up. Like, it's like, this is family, like, yeah. literally. I love, like, Buttercup running around with a towel in his yes. mouth. Yes! <laughs> I'm so like, cute. <laughs> And, you know, can't forget, um, Grace is like, Miss Tommy, does that mean you change your mind? And Tommy's like, these girls wouldn't have it any other way. I have no idea how we're going to make this work, but these are my people. This is my home. And I'm like, yes, girl. Yes, it is. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, and Never like- been happier to hear. Yes. Like probably only rivaled by like learning of these by even the other finale. Yeah. Like like never been happier to see somebody sane. Oh my god, yeah. And I loved seeing like Carlos working with the girls, like helping oh. them, them them helping him or him helping them. It was so cute to see him interacting with them. Tommy was... comforting Owen after the express. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Like, I'm just like after Marlon Blendo, too soon. Too soon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wait, they they knocked out Marlon Blendo and the Espresso Maker all at basically the same time. How dare they? We How file a complaint. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, and this this tugged my heartstrings. Judd yeah. finding the pictures of the old 126. And he's like, well, Cap, looks like the boys fooled through. And I was just like, oh. Oh my god, yeah. Like, I was sitting there like, I'm gonna cry. And I'm like, okay, that was enough heartstrings. And then Billy shows up. Which I, I know... I know things happen here. Can we just say he looks smart? A little, like, yeah. He looked pretty smart in that. Just saying, that was my Billy? opinion. <laughs> but you know gets disturbed later um, yeah. yeah my thing with Billy is like I was like oh dear something is about to go down and I'm not going to like it I have a feeling right. well see EJ had told me just before we started watching cause y'all we started watching we watched the finale together and she told me that like apparently Billy does something and I'm just like I'm sorry I just started to like him yeah. yeah, literally, yeah. we just started liking him like episode twelve, even maybe a little bit before that. And then they do this, which we'll get to. But basically, right. Billy comes in and was like, "He's like, I gotta tell you guys something." And he's like, "I want you to know that you've lived up to the legacy of these fine men. That's about the highest compliment I could ever pay you." Which makes the next part so hard. There's no reason 
to continue what you're doing here today. We're shutting down the 126 permanently. This department is headed for financial crisis. And I'm like, excuse me? I'm just like, hold up. Hold, 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 well, hold up. Yeah, because he basically explains that he's taking over the, as deputy chief when Radford retires. Which, you know, I'm, I'm just going <clears> to <throat> step in and say, if Billy was not being an asshole, um, like if he, he was like going in with good intentions, I don't actually mind that. Because I'm like, I, I don't see any particular reason to mind him being co- becoming, like, new dep- deputy chief if yeah. this scene wasn't happening. Right. Yeah. Okay, Same. so I went through phases with the scene. The first time mm-hmm. I watched this, I was like, this scene's a little less personal than, like, in 6 and 7 of the previous season. Right. But then, like, as I watched it more, I was like, well, the line that really bothers me is, like, him saying, I want you to le- let you know that you've lived up to the legacy of these men. And I'm just thinking, excuse me? Like, there's something <clears throat> odd about this scene. Yeah, I can't yeah. lay my finger on that. Yeah, I can't Not figure it out fully. either. Because, yeah. okay... <sighs> You know, they reacted pretty great to him becoming deputy chief. Like Judd was like, "All right," and so that that's fine. I don't know if it's around that necessarily. Mm-hmm. But the whole thing about like the one twenty six and kind of I don't know if Billy's just this good of a liar, mm-hmm. but he actually seemed regretful to me. Yeah, that's yeah. the thing, and I can't understand it. Yeah, and like, uh, like I think the. Th- Thing. well for me this is really bothersome just because you built this c- character development for billy and you just threw it all down the drain so everyone's yes. gonna hate him again yeah and like see the, what was, i don't know if there's an interview someone else found or whatever but the thing was billy was supposed to be the arse nest yeah. Uh-huh. But when they I, sent the, the script to Billy Tim Burke, Burke yeah. um, he's like, wait, you're just bringing me back to kill me? And so they pulled it off. So basically, all along, they've been playing for him to be the bad guy. And that actually makes me want to go, how many times have I said this this season? Uh, slap somebody. Right. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> just because I'm like... Just- guys why and this is because you know i in 11 and 12 i like billy tyson same like i grew to like him and you you y'all know i should know him so it's like like not show wise just fan fiction wise but still it's like right right guys it doesn't make sense none of this makes sense i've been ever like this whole week i've been like bouncing around this in my head and i'm just trying to like i'm trying to think and i think you're right like when he first got there because i think owen made a comment like oh you're a little overdressed for cleanup duty but grab a hammer or whatever so yeah he he was thinking he was there to help you know? and i i thought that would have been a cool thing for him to do would be to come to help you know because he would have looked at all this that line you know all this time billy has been against him being captain and then all of a sudden they've kind of made amends with that and yeah. then you know they've now gotten he's coming over that and you know technically billy's now now above Owen, mm-hmm. so like that's everything terrifying. Should be taken care of. Yeah, that's scary. Um, <laughs> that's yeah, like, my, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like also the thing about this is okay. So they close the one twenty six. First of all, that makes no sense whatsoever because the they couldn't even get TK and Carlos's in time. The one twenty nine without the one twenty six. Exactly right. the because you know is the hub pub. It if they were able to shut down a couple stations that were a little too close together and be able to separate um some of the calls, divide them into other stations, that's fine. But when TK and Carlos's house was on fire, one twenty nine was the avail- only available one, and it was halfway across town. You I cannot wonder- rely on that kind of schedule, even if there were firehouses a little bit closer that perhaps were out on a call that night. Right. You cannot risk that. My so, thought, what? And I, because I was thinking about this, and so remember at the beginning I said that Owen creating that budget document, I think he kind of shot himself in the foot in that oh, regard. Yeah. But anyone who didn't have nefarious reasons wouldn't have done it that way, right? So he looked at it and said, if you cut some costs, if you turn the temperature down one degree in each station, then you know you'll save this amount of money, and so. There were all these. He never said ways. anything about shutting down fire stations. Right. And... So Billy comes in and thinks, "Huh. Well, if we're going into financial crisis, the instead of putting all this money out to rebuild the 126 that was just ex- blown up, and I don't really want them there anyways because it's sacred ground. Let's just close the 126 and just we don't have to worry about it." Which so I I feel like. Uh, yeah, I think Katie, you kind of put hit it on the head with Billy's like his character development went down the drain again, um, again, and yeah. like, I'm pissed about it. Yes, yeah. yeah, because like to some degree, if we take away the scene, I still like Billy. 
Mm-hmm. But it, it also, if we put the scene in, Owen, I'm after you. Because yeah. I will just say, this boy, he goes, but you're not that beauty chief yet, are you? And Billy says, no, not yet. I kind of wonder if Billy knew something was coming with this. Probably. <laughs> and he, Owen says, good. And he punches him. Yeah, that's the he final. Clocks like, him, he clocks him, yes. He clocks him, like, that, oh, in the episode, and, it, and I'm like, yeah. oh. I, I'm just like, I think I'm going to have to get behind Judd, but I'm like, next. <laughs> yeah. Because of this, I want to clock him. Honestly, I feel like if the scene had gone on any longer, it would have been Owen clocking uh, Billy, then Judd, then TK. Everyone would have been And then Carlos would be like, I'm going to pretend I'm not seeing any of this, but then I'm going to stop my boyfriend from getting involved. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Uh, But, um, yeah. And then, you know, we would have had to worry about Billy because, you know, he probably would have been dead by that point. So, anyway. Or in a coma. (laughs) Um, But still, it's like, even with all of that being explained, none of this makes sense. No. And, and so I'm just I, like, I did so that read, makes me wonder what's happening in season three. Well, I did read an interview with Tim Minear. He was talking about this. And so, yeah, but like you said, Grace, I, cause the article said that, you know, he, when they decided to bring Billy back, the plan was for him to be the arsonist and he was going to die uh, sometime in 12. Probably possibly. just like the arson investigator did. Right. Either I mean, that or yeah, possibly I couldn't... helping rescue TK and Carlos. Yeah, I think that's oh. what it would have been because, yeah. like, I couldn't I think have... it was going to die in the yeah. their apartment. I... Yeah, I couldn't have seen him. Like, I'm honestly glad. Even though we got this terrible thing, I'm honestly not that concerned about it. I mean, they could have ended the show with something way different, and I would have been like, uh... You know, I heard a thought. um, I'm actually going to credit this. um, My not actually adopted, but kind of adopted brother, Dwayne. um, He... We were talking about this a few days ago, and he mentioned something interesting. And he's like, like, this is actually, you know, kind of good in a sense because they need a, a antagonist yeah and i'm saying i'm like yes i in a way i agree with that also at the same time why did it have to be billy but also at the same right. time it was like he was the best option <laughs> yeah yeah he's like the only honestly probably the only option and i mean if we're gonna play this game every season where like billy just becomes the antagonist just to give us something i'm gonna be like let's not bring him back yeah yeah i i don't know how to feel about that i think it's yeah. i think the observation of like you know kind of need an antagonist I can see that. At the same time, I do see how it's best being Billy, but I wish it wasn't. Right. And I think you'd asked, Grace, you'd asked what like they're going to do in season three. It sounded to me like the plan was to keep the 126 apart. Because I think even Marjan's even made a comment when Billy made that announcement that you mean we'll never get back together? Oh, yeah, yeah. And it's just like, uh, no, so that's I, not right. what they came here for. So I, I'm I'm imagining from what the article yeah. said is that Tim was like, yeah, we'll have a little drama, and but they won't be apart for long. So somehow well, in the new season, you know, they'll have some drama at the beginning about fighting to keep the 126 and trying to keep, you know, get their jobs. And Owen's going to try and fight probably to get Mateo somewhere where he's in a healthier environment. I would hope so. Oh, and, hell yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, so, seriously, just file a harassment thing against the uh, oh, yeah. captain. Just and there. Uh, so I imagine they'll, you know, have the first few episodes will be kind of unsure and then they'll all come back together. I don't know. I, I That's what I think. I think yeah. it'll only be like the first maybe two to three episodes. I can't see it going on longer than that. Uh, I yeah. don't think it'll be like half of the season. That's just like too much. Oh. But, but that I really also makes do. me nervous. How are they going to resolve it? Like, are we going to have, are we constantly going to have this merry-go-round of Bill being good, then bad, then good, then bad? Are yeah, we going to just I, have him be completely bad? Are we eventually going to have him go into good? I mean, I... I don't... Uh, my I don't brain know. is frazzled. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I can't see them doing this whole, like, clockwork where, like, oh, here's Billy being bad, and now he's, like, that's just, like, not... I don't know. In my opinion, it's not Matina attainable no and like it's we don't need like this person to cause drama every season they can cause drama in other ways it's just yeah. like i don't know what the purpose is you know to some degree i see this eventually coming to a head yeah exactly. but i'm like does this the way i see it coming to a head is either billy is redeemed again and honestly at this point in time, without season three being out and stuff, I I could go along with him being made good again. But they'd have to make it really, like, involved. 
Yeah. Like, I want story, I want explanations, I want all that. Yeah, I feel or like... Or he's going to leave. And yeah, the only way I can see that is just him disappearing again, or <laughs> them killing him off. Yeah, okay, so I don't think... Like, this is what I think. I think they're just trying to phase him out, and they don't really know how to do it. Like, mm-hmm. they could have easily just left Billy how he was, and had him pop in every once in a while. But right. Have him get doing... star in a few episodes a season. Like... Yeah. That's fine. Billy's not a main character. He's like an every once in a while recurring mm-hmm. character. Yeah. He's like, he's a guest. <laughs> like, literally. Yeah, he's literally. Yes. I wonder. So that's probably, I mean, if he continues to be the deputy chief, that's kind of what his job will probably be, is he'll pop up every once in a while. And, and kind of like would... Radford did. Yeah, and guess and what? They aren't su- causing drama with him. Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't be surprised, though, if, um, like, the beginning of the season, like, I don't know, Owen's like, you guys are worried about money? I'll get you money and like they do this big like push or whatever marjan's five million followers say <laughs> oh my gosh yeah oh my god i can see that happening like her followers like just a trying to s- this yeah. hashtag save the 126 okay now i'm making that a thing <laughs> yes <laughs> Um, but yeah, like, I could see that happening. Also, I feel like Billy's gonna get overthrown. I'm just gonna put that out there. Like, there's no way they're gonna keep him as the deputy chief. He's gonna start so much trouble. Yeah. Because he's still on a... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. None of this I feel good about. None of this I like. I could have done without this completely, and I would have been perfectly happy. So... Yeah, he's going to just keep causing drama and you know, Owen and him are going to continually butt heads. And Which, honestly, come on, they were getting along. Honestly, Billy is too. Billy has since the beginning, since we've met the character, has been on and on about the whole 126 is the original people and not the new people that came in. So whether he said that or not about, you know, you guys lived up to the legacy, you know, or, or not, like he doesn't see them as the 126 he sees them as just replacements so he wants to keep the 126 like it was because he's even since the beginning he's hated that owen's done all the changes and everything he's in so denial. he's a sentimentalist yeah he is he's in a denial honey this has changed yeah the which i thought he largely is gotten over that yeah and I, I think part of too. that even i thought of like came from him having his cancer come back up again mm-hmm Again, uh, I don't know how many times I'm going to keep saying it, but I just, no, it still doesn't make sense. Yeah. And yeah. I think, I think and I'm worried about next season in this respect. See, yeah. I'm the complete opposite. I'm just here, like, oh, so mellow. Like, I legit, I'm not that worried. I'm not really I'm worried not at all. Because, like, they have to resolve this. And the fact that they're like, oh, it won't last that long. I'm like, okay, well. Eh, no, no, no. no. I'm, I'm not worried necessarily what he's going to do next season. Like, I'm not worried in that respect. Like, eh, whatever. I think just, Victor, I'm worried, like, what are they going to do next with this character? Like, how is this mm. going to come to an end? Like, yeah. that's what I'm kind of worried about. But at the same time, it's like, well, we'll find out in January. Yeah. 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 So do we have other fan thoughts about this? I'm sure people have similar reactions <laughs> as what we had. So <laughs> Yes. A lot of people were just surprised by it. A lot of people enjoyed it and like the different aspects of the characters. Um a lot of people said how Owen's gonna have a battle ahead of him and loved Carlos babysitting. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about that forever. Oh, yeah. Um <laughs> This will test the 126 members and show how strong they are. Amate was amazing. True. Billy yeah. is a snake. I think they That's will. That's a good description. Have, yeah. I think, yeah. Yeah. Have a good storyline to start back snakes. up with. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, true. I'm saying as a Slytherin. Um. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it will be interesting. I I liked season two like a lot. Yeah, and I think I liked it better than season one. Like I'm actually excited to like go back and rewatch things and stuff. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah, I just there was like and like I I don't know. I also thought like you can see the development of a lot of the characters from season one to season two, especially like TK, Judd, mm. Mateo. Like, yeah. everyone, but, like, those are the main ones I've noticed. And, yeah. obviously, like, episode 12 is, like, big, and I, that's, even after seeing the finale, I think episode 12 is still number one. Oh, yeah. 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 And then probably, at least for me, probably eight, three, and then 
four, I think, are the tops. Yeah. Mm. It's so hard. <laughs> I think it would be 12, mm-hmm. 8, 3. Yeah. So pretty much the same. Mm. Yeah, that's pretty solid. So, you know, um, winter finale and crossover. Yeah, yeah. There's, like, also, like, little things that, like, get every episode. Yeah. So yeah. for me, like, my top four is four, three, twelve, and eight, kind of, but they kind of go back and forth depending on what mood I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, twelve is an easy one for me just because, oh, like, I just love the episodes. So What's much. not to love? I know. Right, we right. get, like, it's basically a whole Tarlos episode. Let's not lie. That's probably why. But it's just, like, when every time I watch it, I'm like, this is genius. Mm-hmm. Like, whoever came up with this, like, whole idea is genius. Yeah, so we kind of brushed up on the news, but we'll re-say some things. And then there's other things that at least I want to mention. So obviously we already talked about how Brianna will be a series regular next season, which is really exciting. And I've really liked um, the stuff we've gotten from her. And I'm excited to get like possibly more backstory on her and just to get to know her more. And then also... Lone Star will have 18 episodes next season, which when I found this out, I was really jumping around. My mom was like, what the heck is wrong with you? <laughs> so I was like, mom, listen, this is what's going on. <sighs> yeah. No, it's big. It's yeah. so big. Like, I was so, I was, I wasn't worried that they would, like, go down in episodes because I knew they would do at least more than four, do 14 or more. And I was like, there has to be a way, even though it's going to be in January, that they can do 18, which I've heard that basically in January they're going to do their first 10. I don't know if there will be a break in between. I haven't heard that. But then in April, 9-1 and Lone Star will be airing back to back. Yeah. So I'm, like, so happy it's going to be 18 because that's, like, that's, mm-hmm. like, this season was good, I think, in length. But having four more episodes is great. Oh, yeah, sign me up. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. And then there's, like, a lot of interviews dropped this week. I know, like, obviously the one with Tim Minear dropped. I know Ronan did one. Rob's done one. There's been, like, a lot I've of I've read months. none of them. I've just seen little clips. I'm just going <laughs> to yeah. be honest. Yeah. Um, that's why here. That's why we're here, I guess. <laughs> Um, but yeah i know like there was talks about like tk and carlos and like their season two and like moving in together and how their house burned down and like what happens with like where they're living and stuff and like their future of the relationship so it was said that like it's kind of been implied that basically they're all living with owen so like mateo Carlos and Owen are all living in a, under one roof, which is ironic because, um, like, Owen was, like, you know, gonna be empty nester, not for long. Right, and yeah. I love the, I love the quote from the interview that was, like, and suddenly, it's, like, a frat house over there, probably. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's, like, but I'm wrong. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it was said that, um, when we come back, TK and Carlos, uh, will possibly either have found a place or will be looking for a place, which I'm so excited for. I want to see them house hunting. Yeah, I think that, that that's the plan. And then the talk of a proposal, which is all everyone talks about, yeah. is like, I don't know if it, there will be a proposal next season. I'm not saying yes, but I'm not saying no, which I like. Yeah. I mean, I'm okay if it holds off another season, personally. Um, Though I'd like it to be next season. <laughs> uh-huh. Like, I don't need it, like, right away, but, like, towards the end of the season and stuff. And, yeah. And then, like, there was talks about, like, more of the Begins quote-unquote origin stories. And there will be an Owen Begins next season, which they actually wrote in season one, but they tabled it because it was just too much at the time. And then they wanted to do it this year, but they did the crossover instead. And they're going to do it the next year because this, this year, 2021, will be the 20th anniversary. Yeah. Yeah. and stuff so they felt that was the right time for that and like the thing about Lone Stars Begins is they're not necessarily going to be about like how they joined the department and stuff like that which for we us, already know that yeah, yeah. yeah but for certain characters I would like to see at least an implication of that a little bit of it no I kind of like what they did with Judd and Grace Begins mm-hmm. same um, and I'd love to see that further um yeah. represented yeah especially since we're going to be getting lone characters this time it felt a right. little clogged with judd and grace 
both lone characters yeah correct yeah. me if i'm wrong but didn't they say something about we're not gonna have like an episode titled like judd begins or carlos begins it's it's gonna be like we're just gonna get an origin kind of throughout is that what i heard right okay. i've heard that but i don't know if it's true yeah okay so they didn't like blatantly say that but i've read that in the past they just didn't say that like here but they did say like that it's more of like an origin story it's more about like like giving them backstory which is like owens i like a lot of people are dreading owens and i'm like i'm excited for owens i'm excited mm-hmm. it's yeah, gonna be like too. a friggin' movie like oh yeah and like just rob even talked about it saying how like it's gonna be like it's gonna be exactly like the real events and it's gonna like tell like the real stories and i think it's gonna be amazing I'm so excited for it. Yeah. So excited. And excited to see other, you know, origin origin stories. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, and I like the, well, the wedding for TK and Carlos was brought up again. Like, the fictitious it's wedding. It's not going to be three. Yeah, it's not going to be three. Like, that's what I think, and that's what I've read. That basically, like, the thing is, is, like, he's an addict, and he's been sober for a year, and the thing is, is, like, I liked them saying, like, the moment that you start to get very comfortable and feel like you've got things under control, that's, like, when it could be the most dangerous, which, obviously, I'm not saying I want to get a relapse, and that's not what they were saying. Unfortunately, that's what I think people are taking it to insane, but, Yeah. yeah. But it's more like the it's more like the um like it's not gonna happen anytime soon which i think even ronan said um yeah which I, yeah i like what ronan said specifically ronan was like i'm glad they didn't give the fans all they wanted right away and that they gave tarlos time to breathe and have a space to evolve we've seen their ups and downs which makes them feel more really realist- realistic authentic and refreshing and Ronan's like maybe we'll see a wedding down the line or maybe an adoption the sky's the limit for them and I was like I love that it's true mm-hmm. and honestly I don't think fans get that once we get everything we want uh, what's left to get right. exactly good point yeah that, like- we're just going to run out of things yeah. and it's not going to be fun so patience yeah and i think one of the last things that i read because these are only the main things that i think are important was about mateo no longer being a probie and stuff and they were like well like they were i think the question was since he won't be a probie will they add a probie and they're like no like it's probably best well they said it's probably best not to over things because they have these characters they want to serve as well Mm -hmm. honestly they've already got enough people there i believe they have a bigger um cast than og for firefighters right yeah they do and even og they have added a background probie two years after eddie stopped being a probie yeah exactly like it's no hurry even yeah. if they do grab one eventually. Yeah. Though I think if they do grab one, somebody's gonna have to die. So, like, let's not hope for a probie. Yeah, actually. Uh, yeah. Just saying. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Um, Actually, two more things. So, the crossover. It's being hinted that it'll be in LA and they want to have characters that haven't interacted interact. And I'm like, okay, Carlos, Athena, somehow get Grace and Maddie in there somewhere. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. Like, oh, yeah. um, bring, like, legit bring the 126 to the 118. Like, I want it. Yeah. Give it. I don't and- just want a few characters this time. Like, it made sense last time. But let's not do that. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and send a bunch over. Uh, I yeah. get the logistics are hard to work out, but I want yeah. it. And yeah. I'm just going to say, I want some of the iconic duos back together. Like, mm-hmm. Eddie and Marjan and Eddie and Ooh. Judd. I mm-hmm. liked those. Gimme. And I liked Buck and TK working together. Like, yes. Yeah. And Mateo, too. <laughs> like, Gimme is iconic. And I liked Hen and Owen. So, yeah. And yeah. They, didn't they say that it was going to be a two episode crossover too? Yeah. Well, this one kind of was. I don't. I think it'll be similar to what they did this year, where like, because mm. like I've seen many crossovers over many shows, and it's never like the whole thing is in a crossover because they have to do their own storylines at some capacity. Yeah. And then it moves into the crossover, but like we'll see, we'll see. And then the last thing that was mentioned was um grace's pregnancy and they were like i don't know how we're gonna like figure this out like 
if we want to just come in and she's already had the baby, which if they do that, I'm pissed. Yeah. Um, so I want to see that. I think they should do similar. What they did with Maddie is come in and she's like six months pregnant. Yeah. And then, and then like by like the end of the season or at least the where we have like five or six episodes left. And then like she's already had the baby, but I don't think they're going to do that. I've also read that they're going to um they're gonna like have it be that not that much time has passed even though it'll be january when we're watching all this yeah yeah well i think because they were concerned about if they're gonna do a crossover in the second part of the season for both episodes both shows that if they have to somehow keep the timelines around the same time for each show. So the only way to do that is if 911 comes back in September and Lone Star comes back in January, like that's a big jump in time. So they would totally miss it if they didn't, if they came back later or something. So it'll be curious to see what they do end up coming up with for it. Cause I don't want to miss the pregnancy, but it wouldn't hurt to come back in when she's like, seven or eight months pregnant maybe or yeah. just so we can see some you know yeah like yeah i think what they'll do is they will like not leave go too far in advance because mm-hmm. like the crossover is not going to be till april yeah that's a lot of that's a decent amount of time you can easily catch up by then right yeah and they never give like this is such and such a day of 2021 either i so, know which like, kind of confuses me sometimes because i'm like how much time has passed right. like how long are we supposed to assume tarlos has been a thing um like, like we have um, big timelines yeah like obviously i think it's obviously hit a year right now but still yeah. i'm just like um excuse me <laughs> Huh. And then we have our own news of our own. <laughs> yes, podcast yeah. news, y'all. So, season two has wrapped, and we have... So, basically, we're going to have a month about just left of episodes, because Lone Star won't be returning till January 22. So, we have, like, eight months. So, we'll have, like, just about a month of more episodes that we've wanted to do and just things we need to wrap up and then mm-hmm. so episodes will air until july 5th and then we'll take the summer off and then we'll come back at some point in the fall that's tbd right but we'll obviously like post when we're gonna come back when we know more yeah and yeah <laughs> yeah yeah we're all we're gonna be on a hiatus this summer i know because yeah, guys break. there is absolutely no way we could come up with that many episodes yeah that would be like what like 40 50 episodes maybe yeah yeah, yeah. Be like four can't months do it for eight months yeah that would be insane like if it was coming back in the fall we honestly did debate like doing stuff throughout the summer but now that we know it's not till january we're yeah. like yeah that's too much for us and honestly um we need a little bit of break we've been doing this for like six ish months and by the honestly, time by this point we're hitting we're hitting close to eight months i know um, straight well, and this is podcast. our 30th episode i know Woo! which is big which I know. Awesome. I yeah. know. I was like, guys, our 30th is going to be the next one last week. And we're like, whoa. Like, I honestly, I every time I would even type, like, once we got to like 27, 28, I was like, wait, that cannot be right. Yeah. And I'm like, wait, it is. Yeah. <laughs> but so- in the meantime, you can still chat with us on you know our socials we can also keep up with you you know we do have a discord server now so you can join that and connect with us there because i'm sure we'll all be on there at some point <laughs> oh yeah yes. it's so much fun so far it has we've been connecting with people so like i know come on guys come connect with us i know yeah it's so much fun yeah mm-hmm. but yeah so that's podcast news uh, yeah <laughs> honestly i don't think we have much more other than that Well, thank you guys so much for joining us and listening. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast on Anchor. We're also on Spotify, Apple, and Google Podcasts, and almost anywhere podcasts can be found. On iTunes, please rate us and leave us a review. It would mean a lot to us. You guys can also follow the podcast on our socials at 91LS Roundup on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And like we said before, we do have a Discord server, and it will be in the podcast description and in our Instagram bio. And you can Follow me, Katie, at the Love of Tarlos on Instagram and at For Love of Tarlos on Twitter. You can follow me, Grace, at Ronan Rathlin nine one one on Instagram and at Cheap Girl thirty one on Twitter. You can follow me, EJ, at EJ eight three zero two on Instagram and Twitter. Bye. 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 Bye.